There are three classical branches of calculus. The first two, derivatives and integrals, command the vast majority of time and energy in most first-year calculus classes. In many universities, these two topics are the entire course. However, there is a third branch of the calculus which deserves equal attention, infinite series. In some ways, the problem of infinite series is older than the problems motivating derivatives and integrals. Infinite series go back at least to early Greek math mathematics, where thinkers struggled with the puzzles of infinity. The most famous of those ancient puzzles is known as Zeno's Paradox. There are many forms of Zeno's Paradox, and I will present one relatively common version. It says, if you wish to travel from point A to point B, then you first must travel halfway. And having gone halfway to point B, you must again cover half the remaining distance. And having gone three quarters of the way to B, there is still a distance remaining. You must still cover half that distance. Repeating this process gives an infinite series of halves, all of which must be traversed to travel from A to B. Since doing an infinite number of things is not humanly possible, you will never be able to reach B. And finally, this holds for any two points A and B. Therefore, movement is impossible. Obviously, Zeno's paradox doesn't hold, since movement is indeed possible. But Zeno's paradox has commanded the attention and imagination of philosophers and mathematicians for over 2,000 years, as they struggle to deal with the infinity implicit in even the smallest movement. Infinite series is one way, although some would argue an incomplete way, of dealing with Zeno's paradox. So before defining series themselves, I need to start with infinite sequences. An infinite sequence is an ordered set of numbers that are indexed by the natural numbers. These are all notations for infinite series, and in each the subscript is the index. So a1 is the first number, a2 is the second, a3 is the third, and so on, and the list never ends. There are two main ways of presenting a sequence. A direct or closed form description is a formula in the index. The nth number is, if the nth number is n squared, then it describes the sequence 1, 4, 9, 16, and so on. n squared is a formula in the index n. However, there is another way of presenting a sequence, a recursive definition. In this method, there isn't a direct way of saying that the nth element is such and such. Instead, each element is defined based on the previous element. Something like a n, the nth element, is equal to the previous element a n minus 1 plus 2. It says that each element is 2 more than the previous element, and this also defines a never-ending sequence. These are called recursive sequences. Sometimes the equation that defines the term is called a recurrence relation. I'm not going to get into the process here, but there is a whole piece of mathematics devoted to recursion and to recursive sequences. One of the main problems there is to find out if there is a closed form, a direct way to write the recursive sequence, since that direct form is often easier, in general, to work with. Finally, still before examples, let me give you one more key idea for the definition of a sequence. Since the index is the natural numbers, I can also think of sequences as functions where the natural numbers are the domain. Each natural number is sent to some number a n. And then since the natural numbers are already in order, I can think of the output of the function as an ordered sequence. This perspective is very useful since I can already use all the language I have for functions. Treating sequences as functions, I can already talk about bounded, increasing, decreasing, monotonic, similar properties. All of these properties are just inherited from the fact that these can be treated as functions. Finally, one last note. The starting place for sequences is usually n equals 1 or n equals 0. However, it can be any starting point. If I want, I can start at n equals 3 or n equals negative 2, and I just still count up from that starting point. Now let me get into examples. The natural numbers are a sequence themselves. Each a n is just n. The index is the element. As a function, this is the function that sends each natural number to itself. There is a sequence of even numbers, starting with 2. Each element a n is the formula 2 times n. So n equals 1 gives 2, n equals 2 gives 4, n equals 3 gives 6, and so on. There is a sequence of reciprocals. a n is 1 over n, starting with 1. 
This is called the harmonic sequence. The reason for this name is historical. It's not immediately clear what that, this actually has to do with musical harmony. If a sequence alternates between positive and negative terms, it is often called an alternating sequence. By taking the harmonic sequence and making each second term negative, I get the alternating harmonic sequence. The formula is a n equals negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n. To alternate its signs, negative 1 to some power is used. As the power is even or odd, the product of negatives will either be positive or negative. There is a whole family of geometric sequences. These are sequences with a common ratio. Each term divided by the previous term is a fixed number. Here is an example with common ratio negative 1 half. It starts at 1, then I multiply by negative 1 half in each step. The direct form is negative 1 half to the power n, and the recursive form starts with 1 and then has each element equal to negative 1 half times the previous. That's what common ratio means. Similarly, there is a whole family of arithmetic sequences. These are sequences where there is a common difference between the terms. In this example, the common difference is 6. Each term minus the previous term is 6, and the sequence starts at 1. The direct form is an equals 1 plus 6 times n, and the recursive form is an equals a to the n minus 1 plus 6. Each term is the previous term plus 6. Arithmetic and geometric sequences are both important types, and I shall talk about them throughout the next few weeks of the class. Many of you may be aware of the Fibonacci sequence, a historically important and famous example. It is a recursive sequence, with two starting values, usually 1 and 1. Then each number in the sequence is the sum of the previous two numbers. 2 is 1 plus 1, 3 is 1 plus 2, 5 is 2 plus 3, and so on. The pattern and behavior of the Fibonacci sequence has been studied for centuries, and has a richness and some surprise to it. One interesting related sequence is the sequence of ratios of Fibonacci terms. Each element in this sequence is one term from the Fibonacci sequence divided by the previous Fibonacci term. Interestingly, you can prove that this sequence has its own recursive form. Each number is 1 plus the reciprocal of the previous. Unlike the Fibonacci sequence, this related sequence is bounded, and where it is going is an interesting question. 